gearing ratios. We'll be talking about the financing or the capital structure of a business. Analyze it to find out whether the business is in good standing. Okay. So as we know, every business is funded two ways, either through equity, that is the amount that the owners contribute into the business, and or debt, the amount that the business borrows, either from the bank, from lenders, from even their suppliers. All these sources of funding do not come for free. They come at a cost, meaning the owners or the shareholders will demand dividend from the business by contributing the money into it. And the bank or the investors will expect interest of the two. Equity is less risky than debt. This is so because the debt holders, whenever they give the money to the business, they expect return, that is the interest, at periodic intervals without fail, whether the business makes profit or not. So if they invest into the business and the business locks its doors and goes to sleep, the business is mandated to pay them the agreed returns at the specified periods. Unlike equity, they get paid their dividend when the business makes profit. And to the holders, it is not risky. To the debt holder, they will want to invest debt because they are short of their money legally. It is riskier for the equity holder because they only get paid when the business makes profit and it is declared. And again, they are the last to be paid. The debt holders will have to be serviced first before the equity holders. Now, debt can be advantageous in certain ways in as much as it is riskier than equity. One, because it can be cheaper than equity because equity holders face a lot of risk. They demand a lot of returns. Debt holders face less risk, so they will demand less returns comparatively secondly it is okay to go for debt so that you maintain your capital structure the more people you invite into the ownership corridors of your business the less control management has there has to be more people who have to come together and decide the path of the business which might delay but when you go for debt all you need to service them is their interest and you maintain your controlling power now when we come to gm ratios it is a group of ratios that measures the proportion of a business's equity to its debt. It tells of how a business's operation or asset is funded. Is it being funded by the shareholders or the borrowers? Or if both, what proportion stands in the business? Lastly, this ratio is most meaningful when you compare to either the prior year of the business to a chosen competitor or industry set standard okay because in certain industries a highly geared ratio can be okay because the business has monopoly the business has sure way of selling it goods so there wouldn't be any risk of them defaulting let's look at the importance of GMA ratio the first is that investors use it in analyzing whether a business is fit for them to come in a business that has a high debt ratio or it's highly geared. When we say it's highly geared, it means that it has more debt than equity. It means that there is the likelihood of them defaulting. Already have more debt in it. So you are most likely to default in their payment. And as much as it is a good tool for investors, management also uses this ratio to analyze their position. Whenever they are going close to a certain margin, it can give them a wake-up call to retract their steps. Let's look at the analysis of the ratio. Again, as mentioned earlier, this ratio will be okay when it is compared to a prior year, compared to a chosen competitor or an industry set standard. When we do so and it is higher, it means that the business has financial leverage. It means that it has more debt than equity. In certain industries, it will be okay. A business that is in the monopolistic industry, whatever they do, their patronage will come. It doesn't have a problem. They will be able to settle their debt. If you are in a business that operates in a highly competitive market, this will not go well for you. Now, the secondly, it means that the business for that particular year will have a reduced profit compared to the other years or the player because the return on debt, which is interest, is captured in a profit or loss account leading to the profit generation. Okay, But that of equity, which is dividend, is recorded after the profit has been generated. In the statement of changes in equity and at times the comprehensive income okay so when you have more debt compared to your prior years 
or a competitor it means that your profit for that particular year will reduce because more interest will be going into the profit or loss account with other components staying static whereas if you had dividend it will come after the profit but again cash flow is a better judgment of a business's performance other than profitability because there are other notional items or items that have not been spent but have been accrued in the profitability but not in the cash flow when it is higher it means that the business is relatively riskier in its funding structure when people own the business they will give you patience for the business to run in the future they benefit but for debt holders they do not go that way they want the money now on the other hand when you compare and it is lower it means that the business is less financially leveraged less debt or more equity than debt it means that the business will have increased profitability because most of the returns will go after the profits generated it also means that the business has a less risky funding structure most of the money in the business is contributed by the owners now when a business has more equity than debt it means that they have foregone some opportunity in seeking some debt funding which is cheaper than the equity would have now let's look at the types of GM ratio the first is debt to equity ratio so here we measure the proportion of debt in relation to equity now the formula is the total debt in the business including non-current liabilities and current liabilities divided by total equity equity includes the share capital share premium reserves retained earnings okay then you can ratio it to one or you can just divide it and get the decimal place you can also multiply by 100 and get it in the percentage forms the second one is the equity ratio so here we want to know the proportion of the business's assets which is funded by only equity the formula is total equity divided by the total asset then you strike it to one or you can just divide it find it in decimals you can multiply it by 100 and get it in percentage forms the third is the debt ratio which also seeks to find the proportion of the total asset of the business being funded by monies borrowed by the business so the formula is total debt divided by total assets to one you can also find it in decimal places strike it by 100 to find a percentage or just divide it as it is let's test our understanding so this is an extract of a statement of financial position as at 31st December 2021 we have the property plant and equipment that is an on-current asset we have the current asset giving a total asset column of $50,500 we have the equity column the ordinary shares within earnings giving $30,000 then we have the liabilities which is the total debt on current liabilities and current liabilities the bottom giving 50,500 equal in the upper section so we are supposed to calculate and analyze the GMM ratios. Now they've given us the ratio for the industry. That is what we are supposed to measure against. So it's 0 0.9. When we come to the solution, we'll first deal with the debt to equity ratio. So we state the formula, which is total debt over total equity. It will give 0 0.68. We found out by dividing the total debt of $20,500 by $30,000 of equity. When we analyze it, it means that the debt is 68% of equity. It's left with only 22% for it to equal the equity. When we compare this to the industry standard, which is 0 0.9, the 0 0.9 is a high risk. Ideally, anything above 0 0.5 a ratio is considered high. But if you look at the industry, they have set theirs to 0 0.9. So this business, in as much as their 0 0.68 is above 0 0.5, compared to the standard, it is okay. Then lastly, it will get a higher profitability comparatively because the industry standard is set basically from the analysis from players so if they arrive at 0 0.9 it's an average so if the business is doing lesser than that it means that for that particular year the business's profit will be higher than that of other players we'll move to the second part which is the equity ratio we state the formula total equity over total asset we got 0 0.59 we got that by dividing the thirty thousand dollars of equity by fifty thousand five hundred of total asset we analyze this 59 percent of the total asset of the business was funded by monies contributed by the owners again this is a better matrix because it's still less than the 0 0.9 means that the business is doing well 
I mean, we can't just jump into conclusion. We have to still find out what is happening. Is that they are just trying to reduce debt for fitting certain opportunities just to get a proper metrics or not. Most return will go to the equity holders. Okay. When you use the asset, total asset is what the business use in its operation. So the money that will come from it, 59% will have to go to the owners, not the debt holders. Lastly, when we look at the debt ratio, we restate the formula, which is total debt over total asset, leading to 0.41. Arrived at by dividing total debt 20,500 by the total asset 50,500. Analyzing this, it means that the debt of the business finance 41% of the asset of the business. Then it is reasonably favorable because it's less than 50%. Okay. 